One of the cooler things Sony did with the original PlayStation was the release of the Net Yarose, a consumer-level game development kit aimed at students and amateurs looking to get into the world of video game production. Though generally not as cutting-edge as what you'd see from big-name studios, some very impressive games came out of this. In fact, if you were a subscriber to PlayStation Underground, you likely played some games made using the Net Yarose. Unlike the usual featured demos, these were often full-fledged games, some of which even had save features. It was really cool at the time, and even now it's fun to look back at them. A few retail games, notably Devil Dice, started their lives as Net Yarose games. Still, there were plenty of games produced that never met the public eye. One very impressive Net Yarose game that sadly didn't see the light of day at the time was roguelike action RPG Magic Castle. Being mostly developed in the late 90s, the game was put on the back burner after failing to find a publisher. However, the game's developers, Team Kaiga, went ahead and released a fully playable version of the game in early 2021, making this, in some ways, a brand new PS1 game. The game seems pretty basic at first glance. You go through randomized dungeons playing as your choice character from four different classes. Knight, Wizard, Fighter, and Archer. The main goal is to reach the 20th floor of the titular castle, where an evil warlock waits. As you ascend the randomized floors, you'll level up as well as find new equipment, spells, and items that make progression easier. One somewhat surprising aspect about the game is that it allows you to control the camera with the right analog stick, something that wasn't common at the time. Of course, there is a chance that may have been an addition added before its recent release. It has a nice looking graphical style, almost cel shaded in a way. And it has a very well made soundtrack that dynamically changes depending on the environment. Here's one of the main tracks. Now, here's the same track when you're in a darker area. That's pretty cool for an indie PS1 game. Depending on your luck, a playthrough could end in a few minutes, or go on for over an hour. When you start, you are fairly weak, but if you're careful and stumble upon the right items and equipment, enemies won't stand a chance. The armor you pick up is even reflected with your character's color, which is a neat little touch. And there's a secret basement area reached via a spell that has some of the best items you can get. There's even a chance you'll find the same spell again there and get even more items. This does come at a price though. Going to the basement means you'll have to start all over again from the first floor. When you finally do reach the 20th floor, you'll find the previously mentioned Warlock, who is actually, uh, Knight? Anyway, the fight is tough, but as long as you've been collecting items and leveling up, he's not too hard to beat. However, from my experience, it did seem like he was able to run away. I fought him for a bit, couldn't find him again, and ended up going up an extra four floors before encountering him again and finally winning. A quick tip. For first-timers to this game who want to get to said warlock without a lot of frustration, I'd recommend going with the archer. The other characters are manageable once they've powered up a bit, but from the get-go, getting far without a ranged weapon can be pretty challenging. Now, it may sound like there's not a whole lot to do after completing the game, but there are overall goals you can complete to gain various unlockables, such as challenges. And I'd be hard-pressed not to mention one of the coolest features of the game, the co-op. You can play the entire game with up to four players. Now, I wasn't able to play with four, but I was able to do it with two. And I gotta say, it's surprisingly fun. There's a completely different strategy to it, where you need to decide if you want to keep an item or give it to your partner. It also makes moments where a dozen enemies swarm you seem a bit less overwhelming. There is an issue of camera control, since everyone shares one screen, but it's zoomed out far enough that it's usually not a problem. 
The only glaring flaw I found with the multiplayer is that when you're dead, you're dead. You could find yourself dying in 10 minutes while your partner ends up going through the entire castle and defeating the warlock. There is seemingly no way to bring back a fallen comrade, even through the game's shops. And that seems just a tad too punishing for something that is otherwise very fun. When you die in single player, you have to restart from scratch. I get it. But that doesn't completely work when playing with others. The dying in general is really my biggest issue with the game. I can't help but feel I would have enjoyed the game even more if there were save points and some kind of story progression. But dying and restarting from scratch is the very nature of roguelikes, so I guess it can't be helped. Still, it could have done just a bit more, like having a hub town to visit between rounds, a la As Your Dreams. Uh, what am I saying? This game is pretty amazing for what it is. Had it gotten picked up by a publisher, it surely would have gotten some improvements similar to what I mentioned. And even if it didn't, it still would have been worth playing. Being able to play this, a new PS1 game that isn't a translation, is just plain awesome. I can only hope we end up getting more games like this, either through more previously unreleased Netyaroze projects, or maybe even some brand new ones. Probably not gonna happen, but it would be cool. And a quick note to anyone who ends up playing Magic Castle and enjoying it, while there isn't any way to purchase the game itself, you can in fact buy the soundtrack and even get a cool CD. So if you want to support the game, that would be the way to go. If you enjoyed this review, and I thank you for that, be sure to subscribe to see more like it in the future. And if you're already a fan of the channel and would like to help out, consider supporting it on Patreon, where you can see early footage, updates, and even a chance to pick games for review. Anywho, with that said, thanks for watching The Legend of Games.